time for our focus report now on the programme this morning. Are we living through a moment of reckoning for men who use their power as a means to harass and abuse women? The Me Too campaign has become a global rallying cry, including here in France. One month ago, tens of thousands of women went public here with their stories of harassment at home, at work and in the streets, starting a national dialogue and calls for new legislation to better address the issue. Our team here in Paris spoke to women who shared their experience on camera for the first time and we ask, where does this national conversation on sexual harassment stand in France? These women are on a mission to speak out against sexual violence. Here, they hang posters advertising an upcoming demonstration on the issue in Paris, an event of particular importance for Mara, a student who regularly uses public transportation to get to her university. An ordinarily uneventful task, until one day last summer. I felt something between my legs, and I thought it was someone's bag. But then the metro stopped, and I still felt it. I pushed people, and I noticed a hand on my genitals. It was a middle-aged French man in a nice suit. In early October, the Harvey Weinstein scandal caused international outrage. The revelations set off a wave of reactions on social media, where women all over the world shared their experiences. En rentrant de soirée dans le métro, un mec qui m'accoste et qui voulait parler, je refuse. On finit par s'engueuler et il me sort. Je vais sortir ma bite, sale pute, ça va te calmer. In France alone, more than 500,000 posts were published under the Balance ton porc, meaning rat out your pig, hashtag. Demonstrations were organized across the country. In Paris, some 4,000 people gathered in Place de la République to protest sexual abuse. Many were surprised to see such a large showing. It feels so good. I'm no longer alone in talking about it and hearing people tell me, oh, you're just exaggerating. Just look at all the people. In France, one in two women say they've been a victim of sexual harassment or assault. But talking about it is still difficult. Many have come here seeking support by simply sharing their experiences with others. You don't typically tell someone you've been raped when you've just met. You never talk about it. But here, that's how we start our conversations. It's a pretty exceptional form of initial contact. But the protests drew fewer people than social media, just 10,000 people in all of France. But for these women, numbers are less important than their primary objective, making their voices heard. Maud Beckers is a lawyer specialized in sexual harassment. This method of sharing experiences on social media can seem a bit extreme to some, maybe because they're afraid of being denounced themselves. Women also run the risk of being sued for defamation if they have no proof. But what it does show is that there are many victims of sexual harassment who don't feel heard and who want to express themselves. Social media networks, sanctuaries of newfound voices. Marion shared her experience of sexual assault on Twitter. A few dozen characters describing sexual assault that took place when she was just nine years old. A family friend took advantage of me multiple times and tried to rape me. Marion did not know who to turn to after a regrettable experience with the police when she tried to press charges, a memory that still haunts her years later. It was extremely troubling, a bit of a caricature of the good cop, bad cop, except that there were only bad cops. I remember very clearly a person slamming their fists on the table and shouting that my story was incoherent. What happened? How? Where? When? So I was unable to press charges. Honestly, I just started sobbing and decided to leave. In France, only one in ten women presses charges for sexual assault. Like Marion, many are afraid they won't be taken seriously by police officers. Major Fabienne Boulard is in charge of a police training center outside of Paris. She oversees seminars on assisting victims of sexual violence. Although she is well aware of many victims' mistrust of police officers, she insists that the problem is taken seriously. 
un policier, un humain, a police officer is a human being, and human beings are not perfect. With respect to how victims are treated when they press charges, we can't hide that there are some shortcomings. We are aware of that, and that's why we're working on it. And I'd like to say to any victim, come press charges, and if it doesn't work in one police station, go to another. For this lawyer, the problem is that there is very little judicial follow-up in sexual assault cases. These cases are difficult because they often require an investigation. Unfortunately, it's often one person's word against another's. But that requires resources, and in many of these cases, there's no investigation. Sandrine Rousseau, former spokesperson of the Green Party, pressed charges for sexual assault against Denis Baupin, former deputy speaker of the French parliament. But the Paris prosecutor dismissed her case. Now, Rousseau is crowdfunding to start an NGO that she has called Speak Up. Her objective? To help victims of sexual violence talk about what they've gone through. The purpose of the organization is to provide women with a sense of collective strength. We often think we're alone in these experiences, but we're not. During these difficult moments, there's no point in adding unnecessary suffering. And if we're accompanied by someone that says, me too, I've been through that, it's reassuring. In October 2017, complaints filed for sexual harassment increased significantly by 23 percent with the police alone. And the French government also has a new law in the works for 2018. Mara and Marion are hoping for a collective wake-up call. It's a daily struggle, and we're getting sick of it. Even when we explain things, it's hard for men to understand. I think that men don't understand how resilient women can be. If we were to tally all of women's experiences with sexual harassment, many women would never want to touch a man again. Both Mara and Marion plan to get involved in the fight against sexual harassment, though they haven't yet decided what form their activism will take. But one thing is sure, they will not be silent.